only the outermost electrons take part in a chemical reaction. Therefore, it's not always necessary to write the entire electron configuration. So to write an abbreviated or kernel configuration, or shorthand configuration, first you write the symbol for the noble gas on the row immediately above the row of the element you were interested in, in brackets. Remember that your noble gases are this column, so we can only use those in brackets. Then you're going to write the electron configuration for everything from that noble gas until you reach the element you're interested in. So sodium is here. We look back and the noble gas that comes before sodium, this is number 11, would be tin or neon. So neon goes in brackets and then we start reading from neon. So here's neon. This is 3S1. And that's your shorthand configuration. Yes, you do have to know how to do longhand as well. And on any test or quiz, you'll have to do longhand as well as shorthand. If it doesn't specify, then you can write either of them. But if it specifies, you do have to write which one it asks for. So the next one is 10. Here's 10, so following that up, here's number 50. So the noble gas that comes before it would be krypton, number 36. It can't be xeon because xeon comes after it. So it's going to be krypton in brackets. And then we start reading from here. So this is 5s2. And this was the D's. Remember the D's are one less than the period. So 4D, we go all the way through it, so 4D10. Then we go back to the P's. P's are the same as the period number. So it's 5C12. Go ahead and try C and D on your own. On number C, it's telling you the atomic number, so you can find it faster. Selenium was here, so we needed to use argon. Four S two, three D ten, four P four. Again, that's argon, 4s2, 3d10, 4p1234. Let's see if you got number 66 right. 66 is down here. The noble gas that comes before it, looking at the numbers, must have been xeon, 54. So you have xeon in brackets, and then here's number 55. So this is 6s. Watch those numbers. After 56, we go to 57. Remember that the f's are two less than the period number, so this is 4s. So 4s, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. You can always double check yourself. Xeon had 54 electrons, plus 2, plus 10, gives you 66. Go ahead and try the next four on your own. Restart when you have your answer. Hafnium is here. So the noble gas before it is Xeon again. So Xeon and then 6s2. Watch those numbers, 56, then 57. So 4F, we go all the way through the Fs. This is 14. And then it's 5D, because the Ds are one less than the period number, 2. Radium is here. 
So the noble gas before it is radon. And then simply 7s2. Lead was located here. So the noble gas you should have used was xenon. Mix S2, 4S14, 5D10, and finally 6T2. Finally, sulfur is here, so you should have used neon. Three S two, three T four. To figure out which electron is the highest energy, you better look to the one that goes last. Looking back at the last four that we did, that's the highest energy. Highest in energy, highest in energy, and highest in energy. So in this section, it says 3D or 4S. Well, they didn't give you electron configuration, but we can look on the periodic table. Here's 3D, and here's 4S. 3D fills later than 4S. So 3D must be higher in energy. Let's go ahead and try B and C on your own. Restart when you have your answer. So we have 5D and 6T. 6T fills later, so that must be higher in energy. And 6T or 7s, 7s fills later. If the question asks farther from the nucleus, you look at the higher number. So we're just looking for which one is the higher energy level. So 3 or 4. The fourth is farther from the nucleus. When try B and C, restart when you have your answer. So five versus six, six is farther. And six versus seven, seven is farther. When you're given an element and want to know where the highest energy electron is, or the one that's farthest from the nucleus, write the shorthand configuration. So for chlorine, our shorthand configuration would use neon, and then it would be 3s2, 3p5. So my highest energy electron is the last one that fills. So in the 3p, and the farthest from the nucleus, those are both three. So we can just say third energy level. Go ahead and write the shorthand configuration for iron. Restart when you have it. So here's iron. We should use argon. And then 4s2, 3d6. So the highest energy electron is the last one to fill. So in the 3d. And the farthest from the nucleus, you can either say 4s or fourth energy level. Either one. Just want to pause the video and write your shorthand configuration and answer the two questions. Uranium is here, so we need to use radon. And then 7s2. 5s4. So my highest energy is the 5s. 
and farthest from the nucleus is 7F. I'm going to pause the video and try this one on your own. So here in indium, we have krypton, 5S2, 4D10, 5P1. So the highest energy is the 5P, and farthest from the nucleus is going to be us. Because the 5P and 5S are equally far. I'm going to pause the video and figure out which of these is the highest in energy. Here's where all of the electrons are located. So we have 4F, 3D, 4P, 5S, and 4F. Notice 4F would be the last one we come to by quite a lot. So 4F must be the highest in energy. Last thing in this video is paramagnetism and dimagnetism. Paramagnetism indicates unpaired electrons in the substance. When you have unpaired electrons, it causes it to be weakly attracted to a magnet. Dimagnetic indicates only paired electrons are in the substance. And this is going to cause the substance to be repelled from the magnetic field. So to figure out how many unpaired electrons zirconium has, we need to figure out where zirconium's last electron found. So zirconium's last electron would be 4d2. So this is the d, one less than the period, and it's the second one. Everything before the 4d should be filled. So if zirconium's last electron is 4d2, we have to remember that the d has five sublevels. So the s has one, p has three, d has five, and the f has seven. It's just the number of electrons each can hold divided by two. So if d has five sublevels, one, two, three, four, five, Remember when we drew those off-ball diagrams, or the energy diagrams, and we had the arrows. So this is the 4D, and it has two electrons. Remember, according to Hund's rule, the electrons do not pair up until they have to. So it would look like so. So zirconium must have two unpaired electrons. And if it has any unpaired electrons, it's paramagnetic. Okay, one more together. Zinc is located here. Its last electron is in the D. It would be 3D10. Just like the last one, D, I have five orbitals. And I have 10 electrons filling those. So I have zero unpaired electrons, and so it would be dimagnetic, and so it would not be attracted to a magnet. The only elements that are dimagnetic are the ones that are at the end of a sublevel. S2, D10, P6, and F14. All the other electrons are going to be paramagnetic. Go ahead and answer this question and figure out how many unpaired electrons it has, if it has any. Oxygen's last electron is located here. So it's not one of the ones at the end of a group, so it is paramagnetic. It ends in the 2P1234. So yes, it is paramagnetic. 2P4, remember we said that P can hold six electrons, so it has three orbitals. And so that would be one, two, three, four, or two unpaired electrons.